So um, using isotopic analysis of carbon-14 and also carbon-13, which is another isotope of carbon, which if you remember a little bit of chemistry, carbon's atomic weight is 12. That's the most common form of carbon. But to um, summarize, you can use isotopic chemistry to analyze the carbon in the atmosphere, in the CO2, and trace it back to being carbon that came from fossil fuels because the fossil fuels have a smaller amount of carbon-13 and 14 because plants have a preference for carbon-12 and the plants are what help make up the, the, you know, the decay of the plants and the animal matter and the animals having eaten the plants. Uh, and I'm trying to summarize a lot of chemistry in a short period, but suffice it to say, you can, you can look into more details there, but it's scientifically proven that the CO2 there came from man, from burning fossil fuels, and um, it's, you know, 97% of the climate scientists on the planet um, agree that it's a problem and that burning fossil fuels is a big part of it. And we don't have time to go into all of the different arguments, but there are websites on the internet that you can go to and they will explain why all the arguments you hear, why you shouldn't worry about climate change, are not reasons why you shouldn't worry. Um, you'll also hear that water vapor is a bigger, uh, has a large impact on the greenhouse effect. And that's true, but water vapor only stays in the atmosphere for a relatively short period, measured in weeks. So it, it, it doesn't matter if there's a little more water vapor in the air, now it's going to be falling out. And carbon dioxide, on the other hand, stays in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. And, and that's why we can't suddenly um, stop the problem just when we suddenly stop burning fossil fuels. We need to figure out a way to extract CO2 from the atmosphere. But it turns out that technically that's a very difficult problem because it makes up a very small percentage. And again, if you study the, the, the engineering involved, it's more expensive to take it out of the atmosphere than to keep it out of the atmosphere by simply keeping it in the ground as coal or oil or other forms of fossil fuels. And, and again, as mentioned before, the fossil fuels are nearing the point where we can see that the amount we can produce is going to start turning down. Uh, anybody that can plan ahead should be realizing that it's going to take decades to shift from a fossil fuel based economy to a renewable, renewable energy based economy. So we need to start today, since we didn't start 10, 20, 30 years ago when the, the Jim Hansen first testified to Congress I think it's been 20 years ago that this was a problem, and we've been ignoring the problem with our heads in the sand ever since, hoping that it wasn't true. Um, but it is true, and we need to act, and we need to start today so that we have the time to make a gradual transition to um, renewable energy future without it being uh, any more disruptive than it needs to be. So I urge everyone who's... Um, able to watch or hear this tape to do your research. Do what you can to get the word out. Encourage Obama to, or, or any elected official, to get the word out. Tell your friends and neighbors that climate change is real, it's serious, we can solve it, but we need to inform the people because if we're in a democracy and the people don't know it, the politicians who are getting money from the oil industry aren't going to vote for it, and we're going to be continuing on this path towards a huge problem from which we may not be able to recover unless we act soon. So go to the Gwen website at gwenet.org. We have links to many other sites that will provide information. If you want to become more actively involved, you can join any of the many organizations that are working to get the government to do more and to get the word out. 
or if you want to be uh, more creative, help spread the word on Go the Limit and go to gothelimit.org on the web to learn some more information about what that involves. It's time for people to act because for the, the sake of ourselves and our children and everyone we care about, it's a problem that is not going to go away by ignoring it. It's a problem that we can deal with if we work together and it's time to do that now before it's too late. So I appreciate your asking and uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, talk about what's going to have coming out on the 24th. Yes, on the 24th of September, there's uh, another Bill McKibben 350.org action called Moving Planet. And this is um, going to be taking place on every continent on the Earth. Um, with the idea that we want to encourage our fellow citizens and our elected officials to move beyond fossil fuels and to get with this energy transition that we have to go through. So we're asking people around major cities, or, or 350.org is asking people, and, and you can go to uh, their website and find links to Moving Planet, to assemble in a major city with a rally and um, discussion among the people involved and hopefully to attract media attention to, again, help get the word out that this is a problem that we need to deal with. Um, but also, there will be on October 7th and or 8th in Washington and perhaps else, elsewhere uh, a follow-up to the tar sands action in Washington because that's the date that's set for the final hearing about the Keystone Pipeline. And it's not like the Keystone Pipeline is, um, in terms of the fuel involved, going to be the be-all and end-all. It, it represents a small percent of the world total consumption. It's more a symbolic thing because, as I mentioned before, President Obama has the ability, because it crosses an international border, to say yes or no to the project based on whether it's in the national interest of the United States. And if you consider a uh, livable climate being in the national interest of the United States, which I think it is, and if the pipeline represents a continuation of our moving down the path on the fossil fuel path, then it's not in the national interest. And Despite the fact that it will create some short-term jobs while the pipeline is being built, we have to look beyond the short-term jobs, as I explained before, towards the long-term future and say no to the pipeline. There, there's tremendous opposition to it getting out of Canada by other routes. And if people speak up enough, we can keep the tar sands in the ground where they belong and not contribute to the the climate change that we can't tolerate. And, and at the same time, we can protect the aquifer that the pipeline will be going through in the United States. We can protect the boreal forests in Canada that are being decimated to develop the tar sands. And it's another positive feedback effect. Every time we cut down a forest, we're cutting down trees that are absorbing carbon dioxide to pull it out of the atmosphere, which is helping to maintain the levels that the planet was accustomed to before the Industrial Revolution. And there are lots of positive feedback effects. Again, do your research. So cutting down trees is a positive feedback effect because you reduce the absorption of CO2 by nature. The other thing people need to be concerned about and can do their research on is the, the ice at the poles of the planet is decreasing on a zigzag pattern, but always downward every year. And that's not good because the ice caps reflect a lot of sunlight and uh, therefore help to keep the earth at a certain temperature. When the ice melts, it exposes more dark sea water, which absorbs more energy, which enhances the um, heating up of the planet. So th these are some of the positive feedback effects, uh, sometimes referred to as a chain reaction, that we want to prevent 
because uh, anybody that knows anything about chain reactions is that they, they grow stronger. It's like a snowball effect growing as it rolls down a hill, uh, a term that will probably lose its significance in even New England in the future because the snow levels will be decreasing. But we need to stop these positive feedback effects before they make the situation much worse. And, and there are others involving melting frozen methane in, in the tundra of Canada that are uh, also very serious because methane is a gas that's even a stronger greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And there's a lot of methane frozen in the tundra, which is melting. So the release of the, of the methane would be another positive effect that, that would enhance the, the speed of climate change. And again, none of this is visual to the casual observer. Like, after we complete this interview, you and I will go about our day, and everything's going to seem more or less normal. But um, it takes a fine eye to, to see the change happening, or it takes the research of the climate scientist to demonstrate, and the charts are there, the, the CO2 levels are going up like uh, a hockey stick, and the temperature of the planet is going up in parallel with that. I, again, the science is clear, the money's there, the technology is there, um, we just need people to know what's happening, and then we need leadership to get the word out and leadership to, 